Hello guys, welcome back to another video. From this video, we are going to start with a new playlist that is LP3. Uh, and our first video is of assignment number one, that is of DA. That is here, the examiner is expecting us to write a program of a Fibonacci number and that in both recursive as well as an iterative version. So, as it is a very pretty simple program to write, uh, the examiner might the external examiner might uh, ask you to print the series as well because in our program we are expected to write a program that will print the nth Fibonacci number so but the external examiner might ask you or ask you to make some modifications in the code to generate the Fibonacci series so in this video we are going to cover both these versions uh, of this program so the Fibonacci number, uh, you already might be familiar of what is a Fibonacci number, but those who are not familiar, let me give you a short introduction of what is a Fibonacci number. So a Fibonacci number is a number where this is generally a series, this is a sequence or what we called it as a Fibonacci number. So how the sequence is obtained? Uh, first, we have been, we already know that the first value of Fibonacci number is 0, the second value of Fibonacci number is 1. Now, further how we generate the sequences, we generate the sequence by taking up the sum of last two Fibonacci numbers. Over here, as you can see, the third value is obtained by taking the sum of 0 and 1. Similarly, the fourth value, this 2, is obtained by taking the sum of 1 plus 1. Similarly, the 3 is obtained by taking the sum of 1 plus 2. Similarly, the 5 is obtained by taking the sum of 2 plus 3. Similarly, the 8 is obtained by taking up the sum of 5 plus 3, that is 8. Okay, so that's pretty simple to understand. So without wasting any much time, uh, let's write the program. But before that, I will also want to show you one thing that if uh, the user is uh, entering n as 3, the output we must return is 2. Okay, so this is 0th Fibonacci number, 1th Fibonacci number, 2nd and this is 3rd. So output should be 2. Similarly, if n is 7, the output should be, this is 0, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th. The 7th will be the 13th as the output. Okay, the output V, the external examiner is expecting us to return. Okay, so let's go to our Visual Studio code. So this is a template that I have created for you guys. And uh, as you already know that uh, in the practical, we are expected to write a menu-driven program. What is a menu-driven program where the uh, external examiner will enter the option 1 to get the nth Fibonacci number using recursion or iterator. Or he might ask you to make some modification where he ask you to, he or she might ask you to print the Fibonacci series. So I have written over here these three print statements and I am asking the user to enter the input and if the option is 1 so we will call one function that is recursive function for printing the nth Fibonacci number if option is 2 we will print the iterator function and if option is 3 we will print the nth Fibonacci numbers that is a series okay here is a typo okay so let's start writing our code for this recursive function for writing our Fibonacci number so first I will create one function recursive function and I will name this function as uh, favorite and the user is giving us the input of n and first let us handle some edge cases so if the value of n is less than zero so if it is a negative value so we will simply return minus one because if minus one is means that invalid value is invalid input is given if n is equal to is equal to zero or n is equal to is equal to 1, we will simply return n as what we will do, we will return uh, what we discussed that uh, third Fibonacci number is obtained by taking up the sum of last two Fibonacci numbers. So we will write, make a recursive call. So this is how you make a recursive call, Fibonacci of n minus 1, minus n minus 2. So so this will be Fibrec, sorry. So this is a simple code for getting the int Fibonacci number. Okay. So let's, in option 1, let's call our, uh, as it is returning us the value, the return type is int, so we will write, take the output and the series and we will call favorite by passing the end. So here we have to take the input as well. And 
and then we will print okay so let's save our program and let's run our code so as you can see uh, i am giving the input as one now i am asking n as i am giving n as zero so for zero fibonacci number we know that zero fibonacci number is zero let's give another input for one first fibonacci number is one similarly for second fibonacci number again it is one it is getting one similarly for option let's give three so output is two because three zero first second third so this third is two and let's give it for six oh sorry that is oh yeah, i have mistakenly entered the six as option but there is no such option for six one then i will enter six as you can see the output is eight six fibonacci number first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh so <clears throat> This is the sixth Fibonacci number. Zero, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Yeah, this is sixth Fibonacci number. That is eight. Let's do it for seventh. That is thirteen. Oh, sorry, again I did the mistake. Same. Uh, the seventh. That is thirteen. We are getting as the output. Okay. So that's pretty simple. So we have written the code for recursion. Now for writing it, write iterative. The code is similar. The I will call this function as fib iterative, and what I will do. These two conditions will be the same. The these two edge cases if invalid input. Yeah. For now, what we have to do if for handling the uh, inputs where the value of n is greater than one. Okay. So what I will do is I will write int. I will create two variables and initialize the first value as zero and second value as one. Why? Because we already know that the zero Fibonacci number is the uh, zero and first Fibonacci number is one. Then I will create one variable c. And then I will run a loop from second because first two we have already initialized and then we have to go for till n and what I will do I will do take the sum because the third value the c is basically the third value this third value is obtained by taking up the sum of these two first values okay now once we got the third value we have to update the values because why because if we are expected to return a value which is greater than 2 or some other value then we need to update the values of a and b to get the next modified value of c so i hope you understood it so why i am returning b let me give you a dry run why i am returning b okay so as you can see over here uh, the if let's say n is equal to 3 okay n is equal to 3 and we know for n is equal to 3 the output is 2 okay as you can see over here okay now how we are going to try it so let me take this particular code and let me take it over here let me extend it and let's take our pen again and uh, let's see okay so n is 3 as you can see over here so n is not 0 nor 1 nor it is less than 0 so it will straight up come over here this part this line and what it will do it will initialize a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1 okay so what it is doing it is c is initially it is not allotted any value for i is equal to 2 third value c is equal to 2 c is less than 3 yes it is less than 3 so i is sorry i is 2 2 is less than equal to 3 yes if this condition is satisfied c will get updated to 1 a plus b is sum a is equal to b a will be 1 b will be c that is 1 now what it will do uh, now i will increment to 3 okay now 3 is less than equal to 3 yes it is equal to 3 so it will again go inside this for loop c will get updated to 1 plus 1 that is 2 now a is equal to b a will be 1 because b value is 1 b will be equal to c that is 2 and once we come over here as you can see now i will get incremented to 4 which is not the condition because 4 is not less than equal to 3 so that's why we are returning b so i hope i hope you got the gist why, why, why we are returning b as an output okay so this was the iterator version i hope you understood it now our final piece of code is just uh, to generate the fibonacci series that is again similar to this particular code just you need to print instead of uh, returning the fibonacci number the the return type I will change to edit to void and I will call it as 
print Fibonacci series. Okay. Similarly, and uh, over here I will do if n is less than zero, if it is negative, I will simply tell the user that invalid input and yeah, or I will write enter positive number. Okay, and then I will simply return. And if it is a this n is equal to zero or one, then I will say n and then I will say and del or not and del let's do it like this and then I will do the return okay else the initialization will be same as it is instead of over here we will simply print okay then over here I will instead of returning I will print and then okay so this is the modification that you need to do first if n is less than zero the, tell the user to enter a positive number if it is uh, 0 or 1 tell the user to print, uh, return print the value of n and then return and if it is greater than 1 value is n is greater than 1 then you need to simply return it again so let's uh, copy and paste so that it might be easier for us not to uh, rewrite the code so as you can see I am taking the value of n2 then I will call Fib of fib of iterator okay and instead of this I will call n2 and now I will do the same for this particular value and here it will be n3 I will do it for n3 then I will do n3 and because we are we have return type as void because it will simply generate the so I will call print fib series for n3 okay so that's pretty easy to understand i hope uh, let's run our program and for recursive we have already done it so i will do for the iterative so zero as you can see the output is correct for first the output is one correct the for two the output is correct let's do it for five uh, second option five the output is five fifth fibonacci number so zero first, second, third, fourth and fifth as you can see we are getting the right output. Let's say for 10th Fibonacci number what we are getting 55 how? So this is 13 plus 8 is 21, 21 plus 13 that is 35 and 35 plus 21 is 56 I guess yes yeah so we are getting 55 so I have done some mistake I guess yes because this is 24 and now it will be 55 so I hope you understood it so we are getting the right output for iterative uh, code as well now let's generate the Fibonacci series for option 5 let's generate it for 10 up till 10 so as you can see we are getting the output that is 1 2 3 5 8 but why we are not getting the output 0 let's see we have done some mistake i guess so if i is equal to zero why why because we are not printing the value of a and b as well we need to print this as well so over here there was a little mistake let's uh, rerun our program third and uh, let's give it again 10 as you can see now we are getting the correct output 0 1 1 2 3 5 8 13 21 34 and 55 as you can see so this is the same output that we are getting okay so we are done with our first program so let's meet in our next video but don't forget to like share and subscribe so thank you very much guys